Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Life After Lock of Season 3, Episode 59. The season finale comes on next week. And thank God, okay, because I really need this to end, okay? Fake proposed, real babies, and all kind of things going on. But most of it's foolishness, okay? Foolish and the nest. It is 3.44 in the morning, so I doubt I will be on camera, you know what I'm saying, any bit more than this, okay? You know, my hair is pushed back. I'm still here, but again, I'm trying to give y'all what I can give y'all, but off camera, okay? So do not, please, do not be like, why you ain't on camera? Because at 3.44 in the morning, I'm tired, okay? But I love y'all. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to become a whole Jaybird, Jaybird, dun, 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 and dot, okay? Y'all know this channel and my other channel. Please follow me on both, okay? Do not forget to also do these things right here. Like the video, comment in the comment section, share the video, relax, relate, release, send to your yourself and everyone around you and always inhale and exhale because it helps okay y'all know to follow me on social media at jaylee's corner on ig on twitter on tiktok on cash app and all of those things please and thank you again and yes i am here but i will be off camera okay let's get into the first couple of it all i really feel like i'll pop on camera let's hope the signal doesn't get stupid okay bare face leave me be Leave me be, okay? Um, I feel like this was a, this a, a wrap-up episode. Let's start up the wrap-up of the season. But nothing really happened, if you ask me. Like, everything's like, okay, this is what's going on. But wait, this is what's going on. But hold up. This is what could be happening. But wait a minute. But I'm leaving that be. So first up, Amber and Puppy. Um, Amber out here looking for Puppy. You know, Puppy has a warrant out for arrest because she moved out of Mama's house. And she lying, acting like she ain't moved out. When she's on camera, moved out. I'm like, does she know the camera people following her? And that when this airs, the people will know, well, you did move out to Mama's house with your boyfriend. But I'm leaving that be too. So Amber wasn't, I mean, Puppy wasn't home. And so Amber took it upon herself to just sit outside and wait at the house for Puppy to get back. How was Puppy affording that? Puppy got a little Mustang car. Where Puppy going to where she got at home? Okay, where did Puppy get the money to get that car? Maybe it was a show. I don't know. But I'm like, where she at, though? She don't have no job. She got a one off for a rest. Where she at if she got at home? I'm going to that be, too. So Puppy get there. You know, Puppy does not want to turn herself in, but she also know her boyfriend doesn't want to do that either. So she's torn between, but well, I don't want to do it. He doesn't want me to do it, but I also don't want to run. I'm looking like, well, what do you want to do? Now, Amber brings up out, call your PO, talk to them, and see if you do not have to go to jail. You might not have to go to jail to jail, okay, and so puppies, they, like, call the number, the number then said leave a text message or whatever, so she texts the PO officer people, who then text her back and say, look, to get this warrant handled, you have to come and turn yourself in, and this is the thing, it's not like they're saying, you know, we're gonna put you back in prison, which they probably might, but I already know, but again, it's like, you have to at least go down there to see what's going on. And it's weird that it's been going on for like a couple of weeks. So that makes it worse, okay? You should have been went in there and straightened this out. But Puppy's childish, okay? So Puppy then said, you know what? I have to go right now because if I wait, I'm not going to want to go later. So let's just go right now. Let's come take me down to the police station or whatever so I can turn myself in now, on the drive down there. Puppy is saying how hard it has been for her dealing with her mom being sick, you know, when she was in prison before her mom was sick. For like six months, her mom was in the hospital all by herself. And so it's hard, you know, to hear my mom, and you know, for, for, for it to sound like she's dying. And this is the gotcha. So you went through all that while she, you were in prison. You couldn't be there. You then get out. Your mama's still sick. You still doing dumb shit. It's like, don't try to tell me I don't know how to handle it. Be there. Because if you was in prison, you want us to be there. And you're now out of prison. Why don't you just 
be there. Puppy's selfish and puppy's childish and puppy needs to go to fuck up, okay? And people need to stop enabling puppy because as she's driving down there or whatever, she freaks out in the car. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I can't do this. And she says, Amber, let me drive. I'm like, Amber, don't let her drive. Take her down there so she can get it done. Oh, but no, what does Amber do? Amber enables her and they pull over, switch seats, and now puppy driving. I'm like, really, Thelma Louise? <sighs> Amber loves saying she wants to be the smart one and she wants to help Puppy, but she keeps helping Puppy do dumb shit, okay? Let's move on to somebody else. Who's next? We have Sean and Sarah, okay? Now, Sean and Sarah, surprisingly, is still together, okay? I was like, girl, I guess so. So, it was, it was Sarah, Sean, her mom, and their daughter. I mean, and her daughter. And they had like a little park, whatever, have, I guess, family time. And it's like... Sean has six kids. Have y'all had a conversation about why he moved to your state even though he has six kids in a different state and now he in a park playing catch with your daughter? No, y'all had a conversation? Okay. So Sarah and her mom go walk up privately for a private conversation. I'm like, oh, you left him alone with your daughter? Okay. Anyway, not saying he, I'm just saying people don't know people and stop leaving people around your kid, okay? I get his cameras there, but you never know. So Sarah talks to her mom privately, you know, away from Sean and the daughter, and tells her mom that she found out about a week ago that she's pregnant, okay, with Sean's baby up in her belly. And I was like, girl, when she said we first started having sex using condoms, and then we kind of just stopped using them, why? Why? Why stop using condoms? For what? It's like, you do know kind of not only, you know, it really, really helps in not getting pregnant, it also helps not getting an STD. I'm going to leave that be too, because she did. So the mama like, well, I'm happy I'm going to be a grandma again. However, I am not happy who you're pregnant by, and I'm not happy that, you know, you just got out of prison. You know, you don't have, you, didn't, you haven't had time to do anything, not even have no real, you know, long you know, to period of time with your daughter to, you know, get better with her. And now a whole new baby is on the way. Girl, that's on you. Now, she has not told Sean yet, and that's fine. And she also said she does not know how far along she is. Because, again, she just knows she's, you know, she's found out she's pregnant. Um, Sarah getting pregnant by John, I mean, by Sean is stupid. Mainly because... You don't really know him, but she also moved in with him. So I'm like, what I'm gonna say, I guess if you move in with somebody, is it is it crazy that they get you pregnant? I mean, when you just met them, it's all kind of crazy. What you gonna do? It's life after lockup, okay? Now, when she said that she does not want to be um, another one of Sean's bitter baby mamas, I was like, bitch, what? That made me mad because Sean only has one baby mama, okay? Who has six of his kids. And why would you call her bitter? To say that you, you don't want to be another one means the one he has now is bitter. Um, Kelly isn't bitter. Sean is a selfish parent. And she's pissed because he leaves her to raise their six children. So to say that you don't want to be another one of Sean's bitter baby mamas to me makes you sound like you attacking Kelly, who you don't even know. You could her child's father, her six children's father in a whole other state, and he's up here gleefully playing a fucking catch with your daughter. What about his six children? So you should never fix your mouth to say, I don't want to be the other one. But girl, that sounded dumb, 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 dumb. Okay, just say you don't want to be a baby mama. I mean, you already are one because you have a daughter. You know, where's her father? We don't know. But again, do not try to come after someone else based on what you got going on with Sean. You allow him and get you locked up. Because when you said we use condoms, we didn't stop. That was your fault. You should have not stopped using condoms because you should want to have time to yourself after getting out of prison for all those years. But now you're going to be someone else's mother. And now you have to deal with Sean forever. Girl, get out of my face. So let's hope Sean don't leave you and your kid in a few more years for another prisoner. Hey, let's hope that. Because that's what did Kelly. Had six kids with Kelly. And he has fucked her over for two convicts. Okay, both who had children, and he has left his children in a state with their mom. That's the issue that I have with, with Sarah now. That she, I'm like, I can't believe she said that shit. Sean ain't shit as a parent. <sighs> anyway, you know, 
Sean still want to propose to Kelly, but not to Kelly, to Sarah, but Sarah don't know yet. But Sarah is about to tell Sean because she feel like because her mom know she can't now not tell him because her mom might snitch. Anyway, we gonna see how that conversation go. Yeah, she made me mad. Mm -hmm, she showed no did. Got on my goddamn nerves. Okay. Anyway, next up we have John and Christiana. Now John and Christiana um are meeting up with John's sister. Okay. And why? Is they meeting up. Well, John has not seen his little sister since she was around eight years old. So he was, I guess it's like 15 to 20 years ago. I'm not really sure. Um, because the time the math was a math a little bit. Because at one point they said he's first he said eight, even it just since she was eight. Then he said 20 years. She said 15 to 20. I don't know. I'm leaving that be anyway. So I'm like, what's going on? So they all meeting up at a little park or whatever. So the sister, they have the same father, okay? So their their dad had a meth lab, okay? Their house their house was a meth lab. I'm like, I'm like why, why do people have, I'm, really? Okay. Anyway, so the house was a meth lab, and the cops raided said meth lab, and the, they took the kid, the two younger siblings, one was a sister, to, you know, like CPS, don't child, uh, protective services. So the sister got taken away. And so he has not seen this sister since then. Again, since the daddy was running the meth lab out the house and he got raided. Now he brings up how his dad was one of America's most wanted and all that. He was a big time, not, well, not big time, but he was just, he was a, a bad person back then and whatnot. And okay, I, I guess I can see why. Um, Cause he had a meth lab in the house. So, the sister called him off the blue, like, let's meet up because, you know, we ain't seen each other in a while. And so he's all happy, happy, happy. So it's the sister. Oh, I, I had a picture. It's a sister, um, her boyfriend. There are like two or three kids or whatever. And then um, the sister's mom, who was John's stepmom, you know, back in the day or whatever. So he hasn't seen any of them years. This is a sister. Michelle. Boom. That's the sister, okay? And so the sister tells him, because they haven't talked, you know, since she was a kid. Or, they just haven't had any, you know, communication. And so the sister tells him, like, you know, well, the dad was the one who got her hooked on meth, okay, when she was 11. I'm like, and 11, 11 taught her how to do meth. And I'm like, that is, girl, that is crazy. But again, John, you know, was also on drugs, whatever. Anyway. So, but she's like, I got clean, okay, and then, you know, I'm better now. Uh, and he brings up how you, my wife was on drugs. I'm like, nigga, you would, you, not nigga. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, you was on drugs too. Like, don't keep, don't keep bringing up Christiana's drug use because yours is not as, you know, recent, okay? Y'all both are recovering, y'all, not both, all three of y'all are recovering addicts, okay? And even though you feel like, you know, Christiana may be, you know, easier to relapse than you any addict can relapse at any time okay stop reminding her that she could relapse okay leave that being with that but anyway you know because the tear in the tear she didn't with you know the, the mom being sick you know tara's punk ass who's missing or whatever and I'm, I'm gonna stop saying fuck tara because i hate when they bring up tara because i was like man fuck tara but i'm like is tara alive i want to be sure tara's alive and so i'm not saying fuck someone who's dead i'm just saying i don't know yet anyway so while visiting there, you know, they have a little naming ceremony. So he gave his nieces and nephews or whatever native names. And I'm like, are they native? How I be, I feel like he sees like one percent or one, I don't know, three percent, I don't know what percent it was. But I'm like, why girl, I'm leaving that because it's weird to me when people be like, okay, because I'm one part of this or whatever, let me have a whole ceremony for some key. I'm going leave that be. Anyway, so him and sister's happy to see each other, to see each other. Now, Christiana say that because, you know, seeing him with his sister, it makes her miss her sister. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to say fuck Tara. I'm not going to say that. If I think it, I'm more, I want to be sure she's okay. So we then see John, who's upset. I'm sad. I'm upset. I'm mad. Girl, I'm like, why is he mad? So it turns out he's seen, well, he was at work. He said, usually him and Christian talking, text or whatever. She texts him when she's going to sleep, and this time she did not. And so when he got home from work, he was gone. He checked the cameras or whatever. You see that she was, she packed the bag and she left. 
He don't know where she at. She's not responding to phone calls or whatever. And she's basically MIA. So he's pissed. He's pissed, 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 pissed. I can't believe she left me after all I've done for her. I took in her mama. I took in her sister. You know, it's been two years of all this, you know, shit or whatever. And how dare she leave me while I'm working? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. He thinks she relapsed. And he thinks she out here back over to looking for a sister, back over there in that bad part of town, doing whatever these crackheads do. And he's pissed, so pissed off that he went ahead, packed up her shit in some bags, and threw it outside. I said, he was throwing her stuff outside. I was like, man, why are you doing I'm like, why is he packing? Oh, he packed her shit for her? And so his friend come over, the same friend who married them. In that pickup truck, and he like, you know, what's wrong, friend? Like, I'm just upset, you know. She left, whatever. So I'm done. You know, I'm done, 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 done. You know, she left me today. He like, well, first of all, you know, you can't, you know, you when you get married, you know, through the Indian ritual that we did or whatever, you can't just walk away. You know, it's it's a it's a bond that never leaves. So, and so, calm down and let's talk, okay? Now, you know, what I'm saying you probably was nervous because again, you were the one who told her sister to not come to the wedding. You're the one who told the sister to stay away from her. And are you are you nervous that the sister may tell her that you're the one who told her to stay away? I'm like, mm, could that be it? But I also feel like Tara never really listened to John in the beginning. So I can't see her not talking to Christiana simply because John said don't do it. Not as much as Christiana and her mama was calling. It's weird, okay? And that's how I went off with him trying to figure out if he's upset with her for leaving him or if he's scared that what he did secretly will come out. I'm like, hey, probably a little bit of both. Anyway, okay, I'm still here. Um, Next up, we have Lacey, Shane, and Jean, okay? <sighs> this song will never end, and it gets on my nerves, my friend. So... Lacey say how she feels stupid. I feel so dumb for believing Shane will come in here and take care of me and my kids, you know, because he's so young, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like I'm his mama and I should not have been I should not be his mom, I should be his wife, okay. And I'm overwhelmed with having all these children, okay, and a husband who basically thought like I'm his mama. And I was like, but you knew he was childish. When you got with him, because you got with him, he was 21, and they've been in jail since he was 17. So what part of he's a grown-ass man did you believe? When did he ever show you or tell you that he has experience in taking care of a whole lady and three children? I mean, was he someone's wife in prison? Did he have prison? Is that... I'm just confused. So it's weird to me that grown ass Lacey, who had already birthed three babies by multiple men, would be the one to say that Shane Hood went and bamboozled her into thinking that he was responsible enough to take care of her and them kids. He didn't have any experience, ma'am. You did. Okay. Okay. Anyway. So she then said all four of her children are with her father right now. And to her and Shane can get things figured out or whatever. Or it's, it's no more, you know, like negativity or, or toxicness around. I'm like, bitch, your, your daddy always has your kids. Okay. He always has them. You are complaining about having four kids who you barely ever have based on the show. Okay. Based on the show. Anyway. So the producers keep asking her about the fight. Now the fight with Shane happened like five days prior. And she won't give any details on like what the fight was really, how the fight escalated to the point where he got arrested and what he was arrested for. She just kind of, I don't want to talk about it. It's too, it's too, it's too much. But you're on a reality show about your life. Okay. And something finally happens and you don't want to talk about it, girl. Get out my face, Lacey, and do not come back next season. Okay. Anyway, um, we do see that the night after. They got into it, and Shane was arrested. She went out and fucked John. Okay, went out hanging out with John, and then fucked that. I'm like, girl, <sighs> Lacey is like trash, and it's like I, I you know, I, I don't like 
you know, degrading women because we should always be, you know, supportive. But Lacey, Lacey, Lacey makes stupid decisions and then plays, I don't know what happened. If your vagina opened, and that's what happened. You opened your vagina to John. The same way where you opened your vagina to Shane while being with John in the beginning. And that's how all of this started. And when she then said, you know, me and John never had closure, you know, of our relationship. Bitch, you got married. That was closure. Okay, what other clothes from a relationship that you need besides marrying someone else? Okay, it's it's it's, it's so Lacey makes these decisions and it's just stupid. I need mean, closure. You know, we never we never you know you did have you had closure the day you got married. You had more closure the day that you went and prepped your body for in vitro to get pregnant. You did not even get pregnant by him, you know, quote unquote naturally. Okay, y'all had to work at getting pregnant. That should have been closure. But no, you like to make dumb ass decisions because you're stupid. Okay. I don't know what it's called. It. So Lacey then asked John to meet her so they can talk. And John goes to meet up with her. And John is saying, Lacey's so toxic. You know, I'm saying this a lot of us. It's a lot I love about her. But with that comes toxic, messy shit. And I really should not keep dealing with her. And I don't know what to do. John. Stop being stupid, okay? Leave Lacey alone because as bad as Lacey is, you are just as fucked up too. Why? Because you keep going through it with her. I've never seen someone say, my life goes to, from sugar to shit every time I'm with her for too long. And your dumb ass keep going back for what? Poor Kay. <sighs> It's just a stupidity for me. And we still don't know where the fuck Shane at, okay? Ain't seen Shane since he got arrested five days ago. Anyway, I'm going to leave that be. Next up, who do we have? Well, lastly, we have Brittany and Ray. Brittany and Ray, you know, are going to Miami. It's her birthday weekend. Party, party, party. Let's all get wasted weekend, okay? And they're going to Miami. She's paying for it all, okay? It's on her dime. Uh, which, I mean, look what it is. Uh, her, a few of her friends are kind of, they want, maybe her sister and then, uh, and then her friends um, are all going to Miami. There's a lot of them there. And um, she wants to go to Miami. She wants to propose her in Miami. She wants to get her knocked up in Miami. She wants to get, girl, you want to do a lot in Miami over the weekend, okay? To where she went and took an ovulation test. I'm ovulating, you know what I mean? All weekend, we have to have a lot, a lot of sex to get pregnant in Miami. I'm looking like that. It's, it's very weird and childish to me to say, I want to say, I got pregnant in Miami. I'm like, but you live in Texas. So, what's the deal? Anyway, I'm leaving. Um, so, Ray does have a ring, okay? He went out, got a ring, but it's a promise. But I promise I'm going to, you know, uh, get engaged to you later ring is what he got, okay? Fake proposals. And so, you know, he's, I'm like, we're going to say that's going to go because you should never give someone a promise ring on their birthday vacation when you know they want to be engaged. Okay. I feel like you could have gave her that ring before y'all left, but I'm going to leave that be as well to say we're going to leave it be with their relationship. So, um, they get to Miami or whatever. And, oh my God, this room is so nice. I'm so fancy, fancy, fancy. I pay for this. I pay for that. I'm like, but Brittany, why is the room a double bed? Why do you have a double? Bed? I don't. I don't get anyone boasting about how fancy and how much they party, party, party. But it's a room with two full beds, bitch. What ain't you grown? Look, if it's not a king suite, don't brag, okay? The room is so nice, though it's not. Not with them two beds. <laughs> Who wants to pick which, which small ass bed to fuck on? I don't, okay? Girl, get out of my face. Anyway, I just felt like for her birthday, she deserved a queen, a queen or a king size bedroom, okay? Not a room with two full size. You couldn't even push it together because there was a dresser in the middle. Not a dresser, but nice then. But again, girl, step your room up. Okay, get that king size suite for your birthday. And I'm going to leave that be too. Now, he does tell her that, you know, I have a surprise for you. But I won't say what it is. I won't say 
when I'm going to give it to you. It's a surprise, surprise, surprise. So she assumes, because she's a little, a little bit delusional, that, you know, he's going to propose to her. He's going to propose to me, happy, 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 or whatever. And now right then, you're like, I'm nervous about being here. I have not been out in a while. I used to party before but I've never had a party on probation or whatever. I do not want to get in any trouble because Brittany keeps bringing up how she wants to get drunk, drunk. And I don't want, you know, anything to go wrong or whatever. But he does want to have a good time. So when Brittany can dress and she tells her friends how, you know, Ray said he has a surprise for me. I think he's going to propose. And, you know, I want you all to have your phones out to record it or whatever. Honey, and one friend said in the, in the confessional, um, she kept using air quotes. You know, they're supposed to be with them okay you know she's like you know they're you know they're in love and they're together <laughs> you know i don't know if it's gonna propose i was like girl she's a shitty ass friend anyway but again no one thinks ray is ready to propose and it doesn't mean that no one thinks that he loves her i do think ray loves her. i think she loves him but i think her trying to pressure him into quickly proposing is preposterous okay it's stupid okay let that man figure out life give him at least a year out of prison before you want to force him to propose. Now, I do, I've seen a couple of their posts on social media. And they seem to still be together right now. And I don't know if that's because they just doing stuff for the show. I'm not sure. I don't follow them. But I've seen people like post stuff or whatever. So they're supposedly still together right now. Which is great. No one wants them to break up. I just want her to stop rushing him to knock her up. And rushing him to propose. Because... It's time for that. Okay, give us some time or whatever. So they all partying, partying, partying or whatever, partying, dancing, drinking. And, you know, like, I have, you know, I want to talk to you. You know, I just want to show you uh, appreciation for, you know, being there for me and, you know, us being together. And so she assumes he's going to propose and then it goes off. We'll see what happens on the next episode because, again, the next episode is what the finale. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this late night review, okay? Other than that, I have to go because my signal's been stupid. And I will talk to y'all later. I will see you when I see you. Peace. Peace.